Hello everyone. In this next set of videos we will be looking at trees and the goal of this video is to introduce decision trees which are used for classification. In the next video I will introduce regression trees and the goal of these two videos um, is really to give a high level overview of these types of models to show you what they do to the input feature space and to tell you um, um, how you would make predictions on new input um, data points. In the videos after these two, I will explain how we grow or build these trees. So let's start with a familiar example. This is um, the IRIS data set, and it, it contains uh, labeled data points for different types of irises. So apparently you get different um, types of irises. For example, you get the Setosa iris, a versicolor iris, or virginic iris. And so some biologists um, walked in the field and they would measure different properties of irises. So the, the biologist would pick up, for example, this flower. They would know that it's a versicolor and they would record the petal length and the petal width of this specific iris and they would write that down. And the petal is one type of leaf on an iris. There's also the sepal width and the sepal length, which and this data set also records. But on this plot, we're just looking at the petal length and the petal width. So the petal length could maybe be our first feature, x1, and the petal width can maybe be our second feature, x2. And based on these two features, we, want, uh, we might want to be able to classify a new iris, a new one that we haven't seen before, and we might want to predict based on those two measurements whether it's a setosa, a versicolor, or a virginica. And in some previous videos, we looked at, for example, using softmax regression. And what that would do is it would um, place these kind of linear decision boundaries into this um, feature space. And based on these decision boundaries, it would classify a new input um, into one of these three classes. Now, decision trees, which is also a type of classification model, follows a little bit of a different approach. Instead of having boundaries like these, it will try and break up the input space into blocked regions. Okay, so if we train the decision tree on this data set, this is actually the result uh, we could get, something like this. Okay, so um, what happened here was uh, the decision tree created um, these decision boundaries where anything falling in this orange region would be classified as a versicolor iris, anything in this blue region would be classified as a setosa, and anything in this green region would be classified as a virginica. So why is this type of model um, called a decision tree? Um, that's because we can actually represent these blocked decision boundaries, okay, um, we can represent that with a tree-like structure. So this tree structure that we see on this side corresponds exactly to the decision boundaries uh, given um, on this side. It's a little bit confusing that it's called a tree um, because it almost looks like an upside-down tree, um, but that's, that's the convention used. And each of the nodes here at the end would be called uh, leaf nodes. So Let's just see why uh, I'm claiming that the decision boundaries here corresponds exactly to what is captured in the tree structure here. Okay, and to do that, what I'll do is I'll pretend like we have an input here. We have a flower that's not in our training data set, and we want to see uh, what the decision tree, which type of flower it classifies this input as. Is this thing a setosa, a versicolor, or a virginica, according to the tree? Okay, so this specific flower has a petal uh, length of around um, six, I would say, and a petal width of around one. Okay, so what we do is we start at the um, top of the tree here, and we ask for this input that we're trying to classify, is the petal width of this input, is that less than 0 0.8? So the petal width of this flower is one, okay, which is definitely not less than or equal to 0 0.8. So we go down the false route, we go down this way, and we end up in this node here. And then in this node, we ask, 
is the petal width of this flower that we're trying to classify, is it less than or equal to 1.75? Let's just check that. So um, 1.75 is around here, okay? And we can clearly see that um, our input here has a petal width of less than 1.75. So in this note, the answer is actually yes, it's true. So we go down the true branch. There's a convention on, on these type of diagrams to uh, have the left branch correspond to true and the false, um, um, the false one is on the right hand side. Okay, so uh, we were in this node, the petal width is less than 1.75, so we're in this node now. Okay, and then we ask, now we ask, is the petal length less than or equal to 4.95? So now we're actually looking at the feature on this axis, the petal length, and 4.95 is probably somewhere here, that's 4.95, and we see that actually the petal length of our input is more than 4.95. So again, this statement returns false, and we go down this um, branch of the tree. And now we're in a leaf node, we're at the bottom, there's no more decisions to make, and you can see that we're going to classify this input as a virginica. And that makes sense, right? This whole green region here, that is, uh, th that's the virginica region, and our input is clearly in that region, okay? Now, um, we can step through this even uh, just a little bit more and just make sure that we understand this uh, region concept. So we went through a number of decisions, okay? First, we asked, is the petal width less than 0 0.8. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, so 0 0.8 petal width is a line running here, okay? So this node right at the top, this node here, separates the input space into two regions, one at the bottom where the petal width is less than 0 0.8 and one at the top where the petal width is more than um, 0 0.8, okay? Then we went to this node and we asked, is the petal width less than or equal to 1.75? Now that node, again, actually separates out the input space into two regions. Now remember that this node is already above 0 0.8, so we're somewhere up here, and then we're asking, is my petal width less than or equal to 1.75? 1 so what we're doing is we're taking that whole space and then we're dividing it up even further. With that line there okay then we went down this route okay so we know that in this route we're somewhere here somewhere in that space okay and then this route says is my petal length less than 4.95 okay so now it's saying let's separate up that space into two regions uh one where the statement is true okay which is um here and another where this statement is false which is here, okay? So you can actually see that any input in this block would be classified as virginica. Any input in this block corresponds to this leaf node, okay? So we could maybe um, make it green to just highlight that. Being in this leaf node, which corresponds to this region, right? Okay, let's look at the other uh, leaf nodes. This leaf node here, it's actually quite easy to see. This is any input where the petal width is less than 0 0.8. So this is any input where the petal width is less than 0 0.8. So that leaf node corresponds to the blue region. Okay, and then finally, this leaf node corresponds to the top region here. So that's also green. We could maybe give these regions names. We could call this region region one. Okay, we could call this one region two. We could call this one region three and we could call this one region four. Okay, so that decision tree was grown based on two features, the petal length and the petal width. You could also grow a decision tree or build a decision tree on all the features, the petal length, the petal width, and the sepal length and the sepal width, okay? So then your inputs would, won't be just two-dimensional, they will in fact be four-dimensional. And your tree could then maybe be a lot bigger. This tree was actually um, constructed on all um, four features. And you see that the tree asks questions about the petal length,
petal width, but then also about, for example, this node asks a question about the sepal length. Turns out I don't think this tree asks anything about the sepal, sepal width, so I just decided that that's a fairly useless feature, so I won't use it. So that was a brief introduction of decision trees and how we can use them to do classification. In the next video, I will give um, a high level introduction of regression trees.